Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome to another edition of Carolina Panthers Talk, brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming. I'm Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram, coming at you here on the U to the Two. <clears throat> so I wanted to talk about just a just a few things, just a few things. Uh, so Carolina Panthers need to start making cuts to get their roster down to 80 people, and so far, they have made three. The cuts that they recently made were they cut wide receiver Krishan Hogan, offensive lineman Markel Harrell, and defensive tackle Walter Palmore. Now, of course, Harrell and Palmore, just recently I did quick videos of with their signings. But... They still got to make two more cuts. And then they have to be at, have the roster at 53 by uh, August 31st. So that's the, that's the deadline that this team will need to be at a 53-man roster. Now, of course, Carolina does have one preseason game left. So we'll have to see how things go with this final preseason game and really get get an idea of what Matt Rule and this team is going to do as far as who's going to play, who's going to get that last bit of time in the preseason as you get geared up for the regular season, that first regular season game against the New York Jets, which we have no business losing. And I still stick strongly to that. So, one of the things that I came across, and this was a tweet from Ian Rappaport, which I'll share in the description. So, check this out. Ian Rappaport says, and I quote, One player already drawing significant trade interest from around the league is Giants kicker Ryan Santoso. Teams have been calling, and he could be dealt as the season gets closer. His path is blocked by Graham Gano and NYG, but he's shown himself to be starter caliber. So I know a lot has been kind of up in the air about our current kicker, Joey Sly. I mean, what do y'all think? Is this somebody that we should potentially consider? Let's 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 look at let's look at him a little bit. Ryan Santoso, uh, number two, six five, two hundred fifty eight pounds, only twenty five years old. Played at Minnesota, so he was a a Gopher, or is it Golden Gopher? I think it's Golden Gopher, but I could be wrong. But uh, Golden Gophers, yeah, I was right. Never mind. <laughs> But yeah, play play for the Golden Gophers. And apparently along the way, he started out as kicker and then switched to punter. He was an undrafted free agent. Was with the Detroit Lions, but he was waived during final roster cuts. And he played some in the CFL. Or I guess, he no, he was on the practice squad, practice roster with the Montreal Alouettes. I don't know. I don't even know if I said that right. I mean, he's kind of bounced around quite a bit. Had two stints with Montreal, but the second time the season was canceled, which I guess it was due to the pandemic. But... Looking at his Minnesota career, started off struggling, kicking 66.7% on field goal attempts, 12 of 18. But then he got better, went from 66.7 to 80.9%. But then 2016 season, he switched from kicker to punter. 
So I mean this would this would definitely be somebody that we would bring on to be the, the new place kicker, because I mean we're already set at punter with Joseph Charlton. But I mean I don't know. Like I said, Ian Rappaport tweeted about this as potentially kicker that could be on the trade block, considering, you know, the Giants seem to have a healthy Graham Gano, which, you know, I do miss Graham Gano, but I mean, you know, the thing with Graham Gano was he got hurt and Carolina didn't really give him a chance to uh, return from injury. It, it was kind of unfortunate, but it would have been nice if we still had him, but didn't work out that way. But I don't know. What do you guys think? You think this is somebody that Carolina should cons consider going after as far as potentially replacing Joey Sly? Because that's, that's what a lot of people want. Deep down, that's what a lot of people want. A lot of Panther fans want Joey Sly out of here. Plain and simple as that. But I don't know. But let me let me know what y'all think. As far as is this Ryan Santoso somebody that we should go after? And there's also one thing I wanted to talk about. One thing I wanted to talk about. Now, you know, I caught uh, Keep Pounding TV's most recent stream. Like I said, I highly recommend any Carolina Panther fan to definitely subscribe to them. They're great great bunch of people and they are diehard Carolina Panther fans. They're very well knowledgeable and they provide facts and just great discussions. So keep pounding TV on YouTube. Definitely recommend. Now, I feel like there's been a lot of fans kind of split down the middle between, you know, being overly concerned or whatnot with what's been going on in the preseason versus it's no big deal, it's just the preseason. I'm going to just say this. Okay, maybe it's not necessarily panic time because it's the preseason, but that doesn't mean that we should be should not be concerned. We should be concerned. Let's keep it real. Now... If it came down to between the offense and defense, I think Carolina's defense, I think, will be fine. You know, they bend, but don't break, typically. And I feel like, you know, with some of these newer talent, you know, Frankie Louvu's been playing well. And, uh, you know, Hassan Reddick. Another new acquisition has been playing well. You know, we got J.C. Horn. So, I mean, I, I, I'm i pretty sure, I think the defense will be all right. We're not quite the Thieves Avenue defense. But I think we may eventually get there. I think we may eventually get there. But I'm still kind of iffy, you know, with the with the linebackers and with the secondary, just a little. But I, I think ultimately, I think we'll be, we'll be okay on defense. On offense, now we do have the weapons and such, but offensive line and Sam Darnold, very questionable. Now, I can't say a whole lot about Sam Darnold right now because he only played one series, but I hope that we do get to see him maybe play at least, I mean, it'd be nice if he could play a quarter or at least like three or four series, but my thing is this. So far, how things are looking in the preseason, it's not good. It's not good. I mean, you have to you have to also keep in mind what the Panthers' struggles have been for the past few years. I mean, Carolina's red zone offense has been terrible all last season, and I believe even the season before. And then third down conversions, 
third down third down conversion let's let's take a look at third down conversions team so of course last year i mean 38.97 percent that's not good and that was last season 2019 it was 31.88 percent not good I mean, 2018 season, it was at least in the in the 40 percent, which I mean, that's not too crazy, but it's not in the 30s. But I mean, the past few seasons, our third down, we have not done well on third downs, and it still shows to this day. You know, we we haven't we haven't done well on third downs. And red zone, like I said, that first drive in the Baltimore game, we had no business failing to get in the end zone, period. And the fact of the matter is, we need to start being honest with ourselves. We need to start being honest with ourselves. And one thing I want to get on, Joe Brady. I mean, we're talking about somebody that was the the Broyles Award winner and had a national title with the LSU Tigers. Now, and was praised highly, praised highly when he was passing game coordinator and Wide receivers coach. His work at LSU. And then there was even like talks and such after last season about him being in, in the running for being a head coach. Why? Why? With numbers like that? I'm sorry, but let's keep it real. Joe Brady has not really been Joe Brady, according to what his accolades and such are, it hasn't shown so far. Even with one season in, it hasn't shown. And even right now in the preseason, still the same thing. We can't consistently get in the end zone. That's partially on the players and also on the coaching, half and half. I say that, especially last season, being that, you know, we had wide receivers that had over a thousand yards receiving, but look at their, look at their touchdowns though. We couldn't, couldn't get them in the end zone as much. Couldn't get them in the end zone, you know? And it's just, The time is not now to panic, but we have to at least be concerned. We got to be concerned. Because as I said before, we have no, deep down, we really have no business losing this Jets game. And if we lose and see some of the same issues, we are in trouble. We're in trouble. Because we have to also remember, with preseason, we're also taking a look at depth and folks that are going to be able to make the team and make an impact. And not only that, Matt Rule, Coach Rule, talking about, you know, not a not a big need to practice red zone plays when we've struggled at least for a whole season, maybe two, with red zone offense? Like... Come on now. That's not good. That's not good. And right now, it's not showing any signs of being worked on or getting any better. 
I mean, I would hope to at least see some of that in this final preseason game, but it's a big issue. I could understand if we, you know, went into this just having this problem for, for like the first time in a long time, but y'all have to remember we had these struggles for at least a whole season, last season. So what's so what's going to happen going into the regular season and it's not fixed? It's no different. You know, all I'm saying is I'm not saying necessarily to panic because at the end of the day, the, the regular season games are what count the most. But with the way. With the way the offense has been looking. And such, and, and the execution and the discipline of the O-line and penalties and such, I am concerned. The lack of urgency to, to practice red zone offense, that's a concern. That's a concern. So, I mean, that's all I'm saying. You know... The folks that are, you know, pretty up and up and worried and concerned about preseason, like, I don't think folks should be knocking them for that, especially with what we've been seeing out there on the field. I, I think they have a fair, a fair argument. I'm just saying, I think they have a fair argument. And honestly, I, I feel the same way. I feel the same way. So... You know, I'm hoping we at least get to see a little little more of the ones in this final preseason game and just really see some better execution on offense, you know, defense, you know, if they can get off the field, you know, ASAP. And like I said, they they started strong, especially the ones look great, especially getting that that pick on the opening drive. Like like I said, I'm not too crazy concerned about our defense. I think our defense will end up being just fine. They're not Thieves Avenue level, but I think they will be fine. But offense, yeah, I'm, I'm concerned. I'm, I'm very concerned. But let me know what y'all think. Uh... Like I said, let me know what y'all think about the cuts. Who do you think will be cut? You know, if you have some ideas of who you believe won't make the the 53-man roster, let me know. Uh, this Ryan Santoso, kicker slash punter. You think we should go get him? And preseason. With what's been going on, are you concerned? Are you not concerned? Are you in panic mode? Are you not in panic mode? Or is it really meaningless to you let me know what y'all think like comment subscribe hit the notification bell so you can catch every video thank you so much for your time and checking this video out this is blitzball champ jason ingram signing off for another edition of carolina panthers talk hope everybody has a blessed evening i'll see you soon later